Greetings everyone, welcome again to my channel. I am Lasana Batiste. Do you have a passion for gardening? I certainly do. There is always something new taking place in the garden. Yesterday, I was having some problems getting access to this particular area here. This was really, really jumbled up and I created a nice pathway here. I have my compost there, so now it's a nice free flow also open up this particular area so now I have access this particular area is really really hard so that's the reason why I'm putting potted plants there I would like to say a special thanks to Anne Brong who brought some well needed gifts she brought her lovely pruning shears some straps which I am about to use shortly these are to tie the tomato plants onto the stake. So, and this is really, really appreciated. She also brought, did I show you the pruning sh shears? And I'm about to use it. So I'm going to show you all in this episode how to go about pruning your tomato plants. Also, frags was not left out. So frags is in for a treat this morning. And guys, let me tell you something. And just as you left and I re-entered the house, I reached in time. Mommy was about to open the baking bits. She actually thought it was beef jerky. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm not familiar with these. Oh, so you'll be able to reuse them because I was wondering if it was like a zip tie. But what you actually do is you push it in here and then it locks. Uh, so you could reuse these. I was wondering. Gonna stick this tomato plant here. Not too tight. Just enough to hold the plant close towards the stake. The stake, yes. This is really, really a convenient thing, and it's reusable. Just a twist and you pull it through and there you have the plant looking and the good thing is as, as the plant grows you could slacken these now you would have heard about people pruning tomato trees and let's start off by saying there are two types of tomato plants they are determinate and indeterminate and what does this mean Determinate are tomato plants that are designed to bear up to a particular age. These tomato plants will give you like two or three very good bearings, such as these. You'll get large quantities of tomatoes. But then, most of the times, they stop producing. Indeterminate are tomato plants such as the tomato cherry. These could grow for years. They bear lots of fruit. The varieties tend to be very small, however. These plants, the determinate tomatoes, you get better results by pruning them. You get uh, fruits that are very uniform in size. Also, from what Arlene told me, the quality of the fruit in terms of the sweetness of the fruit, the texture of the fruit, improves a lot with pruning. This shears is not going to be used to cut like the big branches of the ornamental plants these are specifically designed for good sharp clean cuts you don't want to be pruning your tomato trees and you're damaging the structure of the tree itself you want clean cuts and let me show you what happens when you do not prune a tomato tree from the early stages the tree begins to split it sends out suckers and this takes a lot of energy out of the tomato plant so rather than the nutrients going towards the fruit it's now going towards the growth of the plant and we could start here these leaves are no longer useful to this plant you also want to be trimming off the branches of your young tomato plants and we are lucky because I have some tomato plants over on the other side that 
have not been pruned as yet but in the meanwhile <clears throat> we can make a decision this is not going to bear any fruit so you could clip this off and once your plant does not have any disease you could just simply cut this up and use it as a mulch so i am clearing up this tree <clears throat> this is also going to allow a lot of wind to pass through so these plants are going to be well aerated also a lot of sunlight is going to come into the plants tomatoes require a lot of sun right so i am trimming off all these this is working like a real charm and that's the pruning that i'm going to do for now this is the best time to start to train your tomato plant from small so we have a tomato tree here that has not been pruned at all we're going to start at the base and we are going to remove all these lower leaves and the reason why we want to do that when you're wetting the tomato plant this dirt is going to be splashing on these lower leaves making the plant very prone to fungus so it's, it's important clean cuts and that's enough for now and let's start to train it towards this stake don't throw away your old broomsticks it's really going to come in very very handy these are easy to drive into the soil and it also looks very neat so we just gently gonna bring this tomato plant here to the stake not too tight this plant is growing and that's it now we don't have that issue as yet but usually you will see a little bud coming out here and those are actually the suckers so when it reaches to a point where you could hold it and pinch it off you want to pinch it off otherwise like with those tomato plants that i didn't do it the tomato plant is going to start to split into maybe two or three different directions these branches the problem with it is yes you're going to get more flowers but as they take fruit because they are not truly attached to the plant with any sort of strength as they take fruit and the fruit develops most likely those branches are going to break off the tomato plant and from the time your plant is broken it's going to be prone to a lot of disease Mm. so it's important to remember as you see those suckers coming out you want to prune them off so let's just show you all again here we are pruning off just at this moment the lower branches believe it or not this is something after we use it we store it away you should clean this with rubbing alcohol especially if you're going to be pruning other types of plants you could be actually transmitting diseases to other plants so we're going to give one last demonstration here gently pull the plant because remember the plant is growing upright and it's a bit away from the stake so i am just going to give it a very loose fit now the plant has the ability to begin to run up the stake when you're putting these stakes down always try and bear in mind where the plant roots are now i planted these tomato trees with a bit of it lying down so the root system is more to this side you could also add in these stakes at the point in time where you planted the seedling you as a matter of fact you could drive these stakes into the ground then plant the tomato plant so you don't want to be damaging the root system of the plant 
So I'll finish up those later and we could move along here a bit. And Judith, you were asking, I actually have three purple trees set right now and they're doing quite well. But we are trying to utilize every inch of this garden. No space is going to be wasted. Here I'm doing some companion gardening. There is an eggplant here or melangen bygan. And this is quite a large pot which could definitely support other plants. This is a booty and what beans do for the soil is add a lot of nitrogen. So having this booty plant in here is actually going to give this bygan a source of nitrogen. It's not going to interfere with the growth of the bygan because as you could see here, I've made a little trellis just to get the body onto the fence. I made sure that I spaced these two plants really far apart because this bygan is going to get a huge crong. This pepper plant is also going to get a huge crong. So this body is not going to interfere with these plants because they will be heading in this direction. This tomato plant is going to do quite well here. As it grows, I may just shift it to a more sunny spot. Now I have plants for this particular area here. This once again is another wasted space. And we could beautify this tank by introducing a trellis here. And we could place two huge plant pots in this particular area. Maybe we could run a watermelon vine, maybe a karate vine, maybe some more body. So we are utilizing all space. Mm. And this is what you have to do in your garden, especially if space is an issue. Mm -hmm. There are things that you can do. This is a perfect example of some of the things you could do to utilize all your space. I just simply ran a lot across from this tree to the other tree. And I have the ability of hanging quite a number of pak choy here. Now, one of the advantages of having your own home garden is to be able to enjoy soft, tender vegetables. We don't have to wait for this pak choy to reach the mature size. We could actually, whatever size pak choy we get here within four weeks time, we harvest. Mm -hmm. and you could have multiple pots I just simply bought two holes on either a hole on either side string it up and hang it up these could also I could utilize if I don't want to put string on the fence I could come from that post I could come to this clothesline here and I could just hang up more plants so we will see how these pak choy plants, we could see what kind of results we're gonna get. And remember when you're planting, you're also planting for the birds. Mm -hmm. So yes, I am gonna lose some pak choy in the process. However, I am gonna plant so much of pak choy here that those birds gonna get tired of eating pak choy. <laughs> they will be looking for something else. So there are quite a number of things when you also set up your little plants because it looks quite decorative you could spot your plants and what this is actually going to do on the when you rest stuff on the soil this is actually shading the soil so a lot of moisture is going to be locked in now i have intentions of planting this pepper plant here so i am training this seedling in the designated spot where it is going to be planted. It may be planted here, or it may be planted in this area here. I have worked this soil, I've dug in. Remember, I don't turn over the soil. I added some manure, some of the cow dung that I collected a couple months ago, and it's underneath this soil, and I've also spread some root and salt. So by the time I put this plant into this ground here, this salt would have already turned into what we call the nitrate form. 
which is the ready available nutrients that plants can pick up easily these things must turn into the nitrates in order for the plants to be able to absorb the nutrients so you could be creative I did this walkway and I utilized the troughs I know that this plant from shifting it all over the garden the amount of light I get here this is going to thrive really really good here now if I didn't realize this camera wasn't turned off now that's okay man anyway the camera running yes it is okay if I have to do this over again or in the future I am going to be planting I will certainly do things a little differently for example I don't like how this looks this is definitely an ISO it's in the middle of the garden yes it did its job in terms of protecting the pak choy however what i've noticed is that this area gets the most amount of sun particularly particularly you can raise the camera a bit particularly the midday heat this trough in the future i will definitely go the way of tomatoes so these pak choy will know this area here where the tomatoes are is actually a more shaded area as you can see there's a mango tree behind us and it protects the plants in this area from the harsh afternoon suns so when these tomato trees are finished with their bearing i am definitely going to be planting either lettuce or pak choy in that bed to the back and maybe even to give it some more protection i may drive a stake well i already have this so maybe i could put a shade cloth from this post to that post which is going to even break it from the the midday heat another thing to bear in mind is this plants like a pak choy could definitely be grown in a pot or in a smaller trough so let's utilize the larger vessels that we have for plants such as tomatoes, bygan, pimentos. And as you can see, we hanging them up. It's taking up less space. We need the ground for our we need the ground for our bigger plants. Mm -hmm. This pimento tree is doing really, really well. Look at its leaves. There's nice growth in there. Pepper <laughs> trees, melangen, bodhi, disease, insects such as mites, leaf miners. These plants are prone to them. If you really want to get a successful plant, go to your garden shop and tell them that you want to get a treatment for mites. We are going to be treating this pepper plant for six weeks. And after that six weeks, this plant will no longer be affected by mites you want to be treating your plants as i said in our previous video you want to be treating your plants from the early stages when it's not in flor flowering flowering you want to be treating your plant before it reaches the stage of flowers you don't want to be spraying a plant when it's bearing fruit or vegetables Hence the reason from seedling for six weeks. For those of you who have planted melangen in the past, you would have experience where your melangen trees are looking healthy. They are bearing lots of flowers. However, you never got one melangen. And the reason for that is there is a worm that attacks the flower of the melangen plant. And this healthy plant will just be uh, this healthy plant will just be this healthy plant will just be dropping its flowers like a pui tree you will never get a melangen so it does not make sense to be planting something and 
all you're getting is flowers. Frogs! Come girl, come girl, come! Frogs! You like yourself. Oh, take your time, take your time. Love it, eh? Right, one more. Nice. I tell and thank you. <laughs> nice girl. Don't worry, have our next bar after this. You may be experiencing financial constraints and there are different options that you could use. You could use tires to plant in and believe it or not, somebody suggested in the comments that you could plant in cardboard boxes. I have done some research and we are going to try planting in this cardboard box. Is the cardboard box going to deteriorate? Of course it is. But I'm sure that I'm going to be able to get at least one cycle of plants from this. So I'd like to thank everybody once again for all the support that has been given to me and my channel. Definitely, Frags will be getting a street now. So Anne, we're going to make sure that we have Frags getting that beef jerky and enjoying it. Hope you guys really enjoyed this episode and I want to thank my dad. Daddy? Yes sir. Thank you very much for assisting me. You're welcome. Man. I really, welcome. really appreciate it because definitely to get some of the shots that we would have been able to capture here this morning, mm. there's no way I could do it by myself. So thanking you all once again for all the support. This is Lasana Batis saying we out till next time. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Dad.